Last week was not our week. We only guessed four. Four of the outcomes right. Probably one of the worst weeks we've ever had picking on the channel here. But we're on to week five. It was a very weird week in my opinion. And this one might be even weirder because of all of the international duties, all the international call-ups. I don't know how to pick this week because there are some teams that do not have any call-ups. And then you have some teams that have like seven guys out. And you're playing your backups backups. So, we're going to jump right in. We have first up Portland Timbers versus LA Galaxy. Both teams very injury ridden right now. Last week, LA Galaxy drew with Vancouver Whitecaps 1-1. One one, whereas Portland Timbers lost 5-1 to one to Atlanta United. LA was at home, so they drew at home. Portland was on the road. Again, all of the injuries are really hurting them this season so far. But I think with all the injuries, with international duty, I do, however, think that Portland walk away at Providence Park with a draw. I know. I think LA Galaxy will come in. I They're not getting it together right now. I think Portland sits 10th, whereas the Galaxy set 12th in the West. That is correct. And I think that LA Galaxy walk away, walk into Providence Park and get a draw. And I think that Timbers will also be happy to walk away with a draw at this point. And I think that that game is going to end in a one-to-one -one draw. So moving on, we have Charlotte FC versus New York Red Bulls. Last week, Charlotte won away at Orlando City 2-1, to one, which I think that was Charlotte's first win of the season. And I, yes, it is. That was our first win of the season. Whereas the Red Bulls... They won their game at home against Columbus Crew, also 2-1. to one. Currently, the Red Bull are in ninth place in the East, whereas Charlotte is setting 14th. I think that Charlotte will build on their win over Orlando City, and I think that they win here. I think that they beat the Red Bull 2 to nothing at home at Bank of America Stadium. So next up, we have Columbus Crew versus Atlanta United. They are at Lower.com Field. Columbus Crew did lose last weekend 2-1 to one, over the Red Bulls, like I said previously, whereas Atlanta United won 5-1 to, no, five to one over the Portland Timbers. Should have been 5 to nothing, but currently Atlanta are 1st in the East and Columbus Crew are 12th in the East. Atlanta is one of the teams that have like 7 guys out on international duty and some very key players, whereas the Columbus Crew, I think, maybe have 1, maybe 2 guys, maybe none. And that's going to play a big role here. I really want Atlanta to win, and I would love to see them win this match, but I don't think they will. I think that we have too many starters gone. I think some people will be able to carry the load a little bit, but not enough. And I actually think Columbus, I, I hate to go against Atlanta United here because of how on fire they've been, but I've got to go with Columbus crew here, and I think that they're going to actually win this match 3 to nothing over Atlanta United. So that takes us to DC United versus New England Revs. Currently, DC are second in the East. New England Revolution are second in the East. DC United is 11th. I can't believe I got that wrong. Um, anyway, DC lost last week 3 to 2 against NYCFC, and the Revs won last week 1 0 over Nashville SC. Nashville is definitely struggling there especially away, but the Revs are looking pretty good. They do have a good bit of injuries, and I did pick against them at the beginning of the year, and here they're they're proving me wrong. And I think this is going to be a tough matchup, but again, some international duties. The Revs do have a lot of injuries. DC United are looking okay-ish, and I think that they get a draw here against the Revs. Uh, I think that just the Revs traveling away, the home field advantage, you know, all that. I think that we do get a draw here at Audi Field 2-2. Two two. So that leads us into Inter-Miami versus Chicago Fire. Currently, Miami is sitting 7th, whereas Chicago Fire are 15th there in the East. Inter-Miami lost last week 2 to nothing against Toronto, where Chicago Fire drew with FC Cincinnati 3-3, three and they blew it. They were up at one point in time, I, th I believe, 3-1 to one against FC Cincinnati, and they came back. They really, really blew it there, in, in my opinion. Inter-Miami, 
have a lot of injuries again just like there's a lot of teams with a, a good bit of injuries also Chicago Fire have some she, it, it seems like Shakiri is out now so it's going to be a rough game for both sides and I think it's going to be a very low scoring game but I think that Miami is going to come out on top and I think that they're going to win this matchup one to nothing over the Chicago Fire so next up we have Philadelphia Union versus Orlando City currently the Union set sixth where Orlando City 6 set 10th. Both of these teams lost last week. Philadelphia lost to Montreal away. Orlando City lost to Charlotte at home. So these two teams definitely should have beat the teams that they faced last week, in my opinion. Uh, Union should have ran all over Montreal, but that is actually one of the games that we picked correctly. I did have Montreal upsetting the Union there. Carranza is out with a red card for the Union, and still no Andre Blake as far as I know. So that that definitely hurts them for this matchup. I don't know how much though because I think that they are a better side than Orlando City and they are back at Subaru Park. I think they get the dub here. I do think that they win 2-1 to one over Orlando City. So that takes us to our first West Conference game. Austin FC versus Colorado Rapids. Currently Austin are 6th. In the West, Colorado is 14th in the West. Austin lost last week against the Houston Dynamo 2 to nothing. What has happened, Austin? What has happened? I don't understand. I, I just don't. It's hard for me to believe. As for Colorado, they lost to Minnesota United at home 2-1. to one. This, this is gonna it was hard for me to determine this game just because I don't know what Austin we're gonna get. Colorado has a lot of injuries. They're not that great, in my opinion. They are actually, for the Supporter Shield, they're 29th out of 29 teams. That, that's what it is. So, what Austin, if Austin shows up to play, which I got a feeling they are, I think they have something to prove here. Yes, they are in sixth place. That is a playoff spot. I understand. Well, pretty much everyone makes the playoffs. But <laughs> anyway, uh, I think that Austin shows up at Q2 Stadium in front of their home fans this game. And I think that they beat Colorado, a injury-ridden Colorado, 3-1 to one there at Q2. So now we have Houston Dynamo versus NYCFC. In NYCFC are currently 5th in the East, where Houston is actually 8th in the West. Last week, both of these two teams won. Houston won 2 to nothing over a Austin team that we just talked about. And NYCFC won against DC United Three to two at home. The future's looking a little bit brighter for both of these teams. Um, I thought the NYCFC were going to be worse than what they are doing right now. They are currently fifth, like I said. But I got a feeling Houston's going to build on this momentum that they got beating Austin, and I believe that they will beat NYCFC here two to one at Shell Energy Stadium. So moving on, we have Minnesota United versus Vancouver Whitecaps. Minnesota are currently 5th in the West, whereas Vancouver are 11th. Minnesota do have some injuries. Vancouver only has a couple. Minnesota did win on the road against Colorado last week, 2-1. And the Whitecaps drew with LA Galaxy 1-1 on the road. So that that is almost a win for the Whitecaps, in my opinion. I do believe that Minnesota are going to be in that top 5 in the West for the whole season. But at the same time, I think the Whitecaps are going to build off the LA Galaxy draw. And they're not going to get a win here. But I think we're going to get another draw. And I think it's going to be a one-to-one -one draw. So that takes us to Nashville SC versus FC Cincinnati. Currently, Nashville are fourth, whereas FC Cincinnati are third there in the east. Nashville have a couple of injuries. I think they have some call-ups. I also think that Cincinnati had some call-ups. Last week, Nashville did lose to the Revs. FC Cincinnati drew with a comeback against uh, Chicago Fire there, 3-3. Three to three. I think that FC Cincinnati go on the road here to Geodis Park. They don't walk away with a win here, but I think that they do draw there in Nashville, and I think it's a 2-2 two to two draw. I think Nashville are struggling right now. They're struggling. They need a score. They need a striker. In my opinion, uh, Sapong just might not be the answer anymore. So they need to move on from him or bring in someone to play alongside him. But 
I do believe that these two teams end up in a 2-2 two -two draw there at Geodis Park. So now we have Sporting Kansas City versus Seattle Sounders. Seattle are currently third in the West, whereas Sporting is 13th in the West. A lot of injuries, again, for a team here with Kansas City and Seattle. They have two injuries. Hibber's still out, which kind of sucks because he just went there this year. It would be nice to see him play more. But Seattle were looking really good. Yes, they drew last week with LAFC 0-0, which was a very crappy game uh, from what I heard in the first half. I watched the second half. It was very boring. Sporting Kansas City lost on the road to FC Dallas 2-1. I think that we're going to see some goals in this matchup, and I think that the road team is going to win. I think Seattle is just a lot better side than Sporting Kansas City, and I believe that they win this matchup 3-2 over Kansas City. So we have a big matchup here. We have Real Salt Lake versus St. Louis City. St. Louis City are still undefeated, which I think has surprised everybody around MLS. I think that they, I don't think anybody thought that they would be this good. Could be wrong. There might be a couple people out there, but I, I don't know. And then you have Real Salt Lake. They are sitting ninth in the West. Last week, Real Salt Lake lost to, not last week, the week before, they lost to Austin FC. So they have had rest where St. Louis City came off of a 3 to nothing win over San Jose Earthquakes. I think this is going to be a good matchup. I think it's going to be a good game. I kind of wish that we could live stream this game, but I am out of town, so there will be no live stream on Saturday because of that. But I think this game is going to end up in a draw. I think Real Salt Lake are going to draw with St. Louis 1-1, and I think that the winning streak ends for St. Louis. So our second to last matchup is LAFC versus FC Dallas. Currently, LAFC are second in the West, where FC Dallas are fourth. Last week, LAFC drew with Seattle 0-0. FC Dallas won their matchup 2-1 over the Sporting Kansas City. I hope that we see goals from LAFC in this match, and I think we will. I think that they actually get the job done at home over FC Dallas. And I think that they shut them out. I'm going to, I don't know why, but I think the LAFC are going to shut them out. And I think that they're going to score too. So I think it will be a two to nothing win for LAFC. Now that brings us to our last match of the weekend. We have San Jose Earthquake versus Toronto FC. I think Toronto, I believe, are one of those teams that have a good number of guys out for international duty. So this is San Jose's chance to jump on them from, you know, beating, you know, the West, beating the East here. Currently, Earthquakes are 8th, no, 7th in the West, and Toronto are 8th in the East, so I got it kind of mixed up there. I think that the Earthquakes get this done. I think Toronto are struggling this season. San Jose started off kind of strong. They, yeah, kind of strong because I think that they should have beat Atlanta in Week 1 and just gave it up at the end. I think Atlanta got lucky. Almada's just on another level. But I think that they get this, the job done at PayPal Park, and I think they win this matchup one to nothing over Toronto FC. So that is all the games. Thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Again, like I said, there will be no live stream this weekend. Unfortunately, I am out of town. But next weekend, we will for sure be back. I will put a poll out, so keep an eye on that. And until the following week, we'll see you then.